Yeah, so thanks for thanks for bearing with us, everyone. Um, and so yeah, so I'm I'm Samuel Jackson from CSR Energy in Melbourne, Australia. Um, thanks for joining us for this live invited presentation from Dr. Guang Yang. So I'd like to thank Interpol for putting this th together um, and allowing us all to virtually connect in these difficult times. So I, I just want to talk through a few of the housekeeping aspects. So if you're not speaking, um, please keep your microphone on mute. If you have a question, um, please type hand up in the chat box or use the Q&A in Hoover to be called on. Um, the Zoom chat has been disabled. Um, and finally, filming or recording is prohibited. However, the session is being recorded by Interpol and will be available for a week after the end of the conference. Um, so with that, let's get to the main event. So our invited speaker today is Dr. Guan Yang. He is an assistant professor at the School of Mechanical Engineering, Shanghai Zhao Tong University, SJTU. He earned his bachelor's degree from Tianjin University in 2011 and his PhD from Shanghai Zhao Tong University in 2016. Before joining SJTU, he was a postdoctoral research associate in the Institute of Aerospace Thermodynamics at the University of Stuttgart. His research interests include heat and mass transfer, transfer, transport in porous media, interface phenomena, and aerospace thermal sciences. He has published over 30 peer-reviewed journal papers and six patents. So today, Dr. Guan Yang will be talking about coupling free flow and porous media flow and its applications to aerospace and mechanical engineering. So I'll hand it over to you, Guan, if you want to share your screen. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Jackson. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah. Oh, All good. Yes, I'll yes. stop my video. Um, okay. Uh, we can, can, can also see my screen. We can see your slides. Looks good. Ah, okay, nice. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for the introduction, uh, Dr. Jackson. And uh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to my talk. My topic is about uh, turbulence transport across the uh, coupled interface between pulse media and free flow. And this is a uh, joint work with uh, Dr. Chu, uh, Professor Wagon, and Professor Hemis. Uh, in this presentation, I will introduce the motivation of the work as well as uh, uh, numerical studies by direct numerical simulation and by uh, Reynolds averaged modelings. It's known that the coupled system of free flow with a pulse media flow play an important role in many biological, environmental, and engineering processes. Here shows some examples. All of these processes are coupled and controlled by interfaces between the two domains. Uh, so the modeling from the macro scale is considered the most effective way to understand such interface-driven processes. Uh, the correct uh, use of the interface condition is still very essential and also challenging due to the uh, complexity of the interactions. Therefore, the understanding of the flow physics in micro scale is a, a prerequisite to build or improve interface conditions. One of the challenges is the involvement of turbulence, which is a topic of this study. Turbulence is, uh, has been uh, found to occur in the pulse of the pulse media when the uh, Reynolds number reaches to about several hundreds. And the turbulence is considered as the oldest unsolved problem in physics. A turbulent flow is uh, composed of vorti uh, vertical motions of different length scales. And unlike channel flows, Turbulence in pulse media is strongly influenced by the geometrically complex uh, fluid and solid interfaces. Therefore, uh, the turbulence in pulse media is only just beginning to be understood. Even so, uh, emerging engineering technologies bring strong needs for understanding and manipulating the pulse media involved turbulence. Here we showed uh, two examples. In gas turbine blade cooling, pulse media can be used for uh, heat transfer enhancement. 
here very high Reynolds number uh, can be present because of the high internal pressures. And this photo shows uh, structured pulse media made by 3D printing. The pulse scale Reynolds number uh, in this case uh, is in the order of several thousands. Another example is uh, liquid acquisition devices for in-space propellant management. Uh, the Reynolds number in the power scale are even higher to enhance the uh, mass flow rate. In these applications, uh, turbulent flows are uh, specially uh, controlled to uh, enhance the heat and mass transport at the interface. Uh, as I just mentioned, the pulse medium itself has the nature of different lung scales, and so does turbulence. On the other hand, it's generally not easy to perform high resolution and high frequency measurements inside a 3D pulse media. Therefore, a fully resolved uh, direct numerical simulation uh, provides an optional way to understand such flow physics. Uh, direct numerical simulation solves turbulence at all scales. Therefore, it's possible to perform a, a numerical experiment. It also enables microscopic visualization and analysis uh, of turbulent physics. And because no turbulence model is used for the DNS calculations, the turbulent statistics can also be used to support uh, other models such as large eddy simulations or Reynolds averaged simulations. Well, the main drawback of DNS is that uh, extremely high resolution is needed in both time and space. Uh, in this study, we, we used the open source uh, CFD software Nectar++ to solve the uh, 3D incompressible uh, navier stokes equations. It combines high order discretization, discretization and match, match flexibility. Uh, the simulations run parallel with 100,000 cores on a supercomputer, supercomputer in Stuttgart. And this slide shows the cross-section of the flow domain as well as a snapshot of the wall normal velocity. Uh, as we can see, the pulse domain is consists of uh, circular cylinders uh, which are arranged in line. And four cases of simulations are conducted, covering two porosities and different Reynolds numbers. Uh, periodic boundary conditions are defined in X and Z directions. And the polynomial orders of the elements in different regions are set as different values to get uh, Final mesh uh, near the uh, solid surface. Then let's check the uh, DNS simulation results. This figure shows uh, normalized velocities near the porous wall and the smooth wall. Uh, as we can see, uh, all the velocities near the smooth wall uh, can follow the linear and the log law fairly well regardless of their difference in porosities and Reynolds numbers. Well, for the porous wall, a much lower magnitude of velocity is formed, and the velocity uh, also decreases with uh, uh, increasing porosity. The ensembled average velocity fields near the interface are shown in this figure. Uh, a pair of uh, counter rotating uh, vortices can be formed uh, between two cylinders in the low porosity cases A1 and A2. Well, this is absent uh, in the high porosity cases. In A1 and A2, the upper vortex is driven by the mainstream velocity, which is like a lead driven cavity flow. And the uh, upper and lower vortex are separated by the narrow throat. For the higher velocity cases, B1 and B2, 
uh, the blow and suction events uh, strongly exchange the fluids in the vertical direction, as can be seen clearly from the uh, distribution of the vertical velocities. All the turbulent uh, kinetic energy components and the Reynolds shear stresses are uh, intensified by the pulse media layer uh, in this set compared to the smooth top wall uh, shown here. Uh, and we can also observe the strong turbulent uh, fluctuations inside the uh, pulse medium, especially for uh, high Reynolds number and uh, high porosity cases. Uh, then we performed uh, spectral analysis of turbulent kinetic energy based on the DNS results. Uh, these two figures show one-dimensional pre-multiplied spectra of uh, TKE as a function of uh, wavelengths and also uh, wall distance. Uh, the first row is uh, in streamwise direction and the second row is in spanwise direction. Uh, the, the black lines indicate the spectra from the upper smooth side and the color contours are the spectra from the polar side. Uh, as can be seen from the first row that high energy specs are observed in the uh, streamwise spectra of all cases. And the uh, wavelengths of the specs feature harmonic uh, wave waves with a max maximum wavelength of the uh, per unit length D, which indicates these specs are regulated uh, fluctuation uh, generated from the pulse media. Well, in contrast, uh, spanwise spectra are less affected by the periodic pulse unit. Uh, the budget uh, of TKE is then uh, analyzed in detail to visualize the uh, turbulence transport. Derived, derived from the momentum equation, uh, the transport equation for the uh, turbulent kinetic energy can be written as uh, the form shown here. And uh, there are different terms. Uh, in, the, in the figure, the first row is uh, turbulence production term P, which mainly locates above the cylinder array. Uh, for high porosity cases, actual P uh, is also found below the interface. The second row is the uh, uh, convection term C. And for uh, high porosity cases, B1 and B2, the energy is clearly extracted from the upstream position of the cylinder to the uh, downstream position. The turbulence uh, diffusion term T and the pressure transportation term pi are nearly opposite with the production and the convection term. This indicates they are smoothing out the uh, inhomogeneity introduced by P and C. The fifth row, D, is a viscous uh, diffusion term. It indicates uh, a redistribution of energy in wall normal direction due to viscosity. And the uh, dissipation of energy, epsilon, in the last row is observed with its uh, minimum on the top side of cylinders, suggesting most uh, dissipation is above the interface. The pre-multiplied spanwise spectra of TKE budget is uh, also anal analyzed to understand the turbulence transport. Uh, here I'm not going into the details due to the uh, limited time. And to make an interim summary uh, by performing DNS, we captured the fundamental physics of turbulence at the uh, coupled inter interface. And the DNS also helps to understand the role of different scale modes by looking into the TKE budget. Uh, well, uh, if one is interested only in the time averaged 
flow behaviors. A much cheaper RAS modeling for turbulence is also sufficient. Then let me introduce the study of the coupled process using a RAS model, uh, also focused on the pore scale. The equations of continuity, momentum, and energy are solved while, uh, while different with the uh, DNA simulation. Uh, they are Reynolds stress terms uh, in both uh, momentum energy and energy uh, and energy uh, uh, energy equation uh, in this study turbulence is uh, computed using the uh, ssg model and this model is chosen uh, because it fits well with experiments for high riddles number cross media flows uh, as we also want to check the effect of uh, non-parallel flow, the physical model is considered to be uh, consists of a horizontal channel flow and, a, and an upward pulse media flow. And two types of pulse structures uh, are considered, which are inline and staggered arrangement of elements. Uh, here in the, in the rest model, much higher Reynolds numbers then the DNS can be reached. And the upper limit is in the order of uh, 10 power 5. And the grid independence has also been tested. Uh, here in this slide shows the effect of velocity ratio on local velocity distribution as an interface. So the velocity contours are nearly horizontal when the velocity ratio is low. But for high velocity ratios, the velocity field becomes much complex. Uh, the flow patterns are uh, similar for the two different arrangements of power structures when the velocity ratio uh, is low, as can be seen from the uh, first row of this, of this figure. But they are quite different when the velocity ratio is high, as in this case, the cross media flow dominates the uh, whole flow field. Regarding heat transfer, uh, the temperature di di uh, distribution for different cases uh, and the local new set numbers are also investiga investigated. And based on these simulations, we proposed a correlation for the average new set number accounting for the power structure, Reynolds numbers, and also the uh, velocity ratios. We used also the uh, power scale numerical data to validate the IEV scale interface conditions. Here we choose the widely used uh, Beavers Joseph uh, condition. We want to check if this interface condition uh, is valid in non parallel turbulent flows or not. And keeping this aim in mind, the per scale data has been scaled up. And the figures here uh, illustrate the averaging volumes and also the uh, averaging surfaces as the coupled interface. As in this equation, alpha, uh, the alpha value uh, is the uh, uh, most important factor. Uh, we calculated uh, the alpha inversely using the averaged uh, velocity and the averaged velocity gradients. Here in this slide shows the averaged uh, slip velocity at the interface, the velocity gradient in x and y directions, and also the distribution of, of alpha. Uh, in the case of uh, uh, the zero velocity ratio, due to symmetry, only a half of the interface is shown and the uh, flow goes from the bottom uh, to the uh, upward side. We can see that the alpha value uh, is quite uniform at the interface, which varies uh, between about 0 0.7 to 3, uh, 2.7 to 3, except at the very beginning at, at, and at the end part of the interface. And then uh, we further calculated the average alpha at the interface 
for different Reynolds numbers for both inline and staggered cases. As can be uh, found from this figure, alpha increases with the uh, uh, with the Reynolds number. This is also consistent with our recent experiments. Uh, and the maximum difference uh, for the two arrangements uh, is also quite small, which proves that the alpha is only a surface property and is not quite related to the power structures uh, for this. Uh, parallel flow with the velocity ratio of zero. Well, uh, for non-parallel flow cases, the velocity ratio is found to have strong uh, effects on both the slip velocity and the velocity gradient. Therefore, uh, it affects the alpha value as well. Here in this figure, uh, summarize the interface averaged alpha uh, for different uh, Reynolds numbers, uh, different power, power structures, and also different velocity ratios. Uh, here, a critical velocity ratio of about 0 0.05 is found. And when the velocity ratio is below this value, uh, the Reynolds number governs the alpha value. Well, when the uh, velocity ratio uh, is above this uh, critical value, uh, the uh, cross media flow governs the uh, alpha value, where we can see uh, the two types of uh, power structure have a very strong influence of the alpha value. Then uh, we implemented this, calcul this uh, calculated alpha into uh, IEV scale models on the platform of GUMUX. Uh, here, both constant and uh, uh, specially distributed value of alpha are used. And these two figures compare the velocity distribution by per scale and IEV scale models. It seems that the difference in the channel velocity uh, is below 5% uh, from different models. And the models with constant alpha and specially distributed alpha almost can get the same results. Uh, at last, to sum up my presentation, the detailed uh, flow features at the coupled interface can be captured by the fully resolved DNS calculations. DNS can also help to understand the role of different uh, scale modes by looking into the budget of the spectral TKE. Rest based models can be used to uh, study these coupling processes, uh, which also can uh, improve the interface conditions. And power scale simulations by both DNS and RANS can be used for improving IEV based models. Uh, while this work is limited to only single-phase turbulence, uh, the, the study of turbulent multi-phase flows is uh, also in our uh, future plan. And these are the references for uh, this work. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Hi, Guang, um, thanks for that brilliant presentation. Um, so now we'll, we'll take some questions. Um, if people want to post in the Q&A or in the chat to the side, I can, I can ask them for a uh, mm -hmm. Um I guess to get started, I'll, I could ask a, a quick question. So um, for the, in the first part of the presentation, when you had the different porosity structures, um, you mentioned that when it was quite small porosity, there was, a, there was quite um, little transfer from the free flow to the porous domain in terms of the energy and the flow. Um, yes. So for most sort of engineering applications, would this be the case really where, because your porosity would generally be quite low if it was a real porous media, say 0.2 or 0.3? Yeah, uh, because uh, 
uh, I think the pulse media used for uh, uh, engineering applications and uh, some uh, uh, natural pulse media are quite different because for uh, engineering uh, applications, so the higher the porosity, the better, because we can get uh, better uh, heat transfer coefficient and also uh, can get uh, better uh, mass transfer. Yeah, uh, here uh, in this figure, uh, we have the porosity of uh, 0 0.5 and 0, 0 0.8. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, it seems that uh, for 0 0.5, uh, the, 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 the main flow is uh, blocked by the pores. Uh, for example, the A1 case and the A2 case, but for the porosity of 0 0.8, uh, the flow uh, from the channel can uh, go into the pores domain. Yeah, mm. so uh, the porosity can uh, uh, have a, a big big influence on the uh, on both the flow and the energy transfer. Mm. Okay, yeah. thank you. So there's a question from the um, Q and A. Um, Hi, Guang. Thanks a lot for your interesting talk. Maybe I missed it, but what's the Reynolds number within the porous medium with cylinders? And that was by Killian Weishaupt. Weishaupt. I hope I've pronounced that. Uh, sorry, I didn't get it. Which rooms, windows, for which case? Um, the porous media with cylinders. So I think it's this case, potentially. This case? Yeah. Uh, the, the DNS case, right? right? Uh, I think so, yeah. Yeah, this case? Yeah. Yeah, uh, based oh, on yeah. The, uh, yeah, based on the uh, width of the channel, the Reynolds number uh, uh, from uh, 2,500 to about uh, 8,000. Well, if we defend the, defend the Reynolds number uh, with the process, it's about uh, 300 to uh, about 1,000. Yeah, there, there, are, there are different de uh, definitions of the Reynolds number. Yeah, okay, yeah. great. Um, so I'll ask this, I'll just wait in for other questions on the chat. Um, I'll ask another one in, in the interim. Um, so I've seen, there's been lots of experimental comparisons with DNS for sort of wall bounded turbulence when you've just got a solid wall um, and velocity profiles. Do you have experimental validation with the porous media side of it as well? Um, is there experiments where you have the coupling that you can validate your DNS with? Uh... No, we don't have because uh, uh, the experiments uh, of turbulence uh, inside the pulse media is very uh, yeah difficult. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. But but we have uh, we did experiments for uh, laminar flow uh, with very low Reynolds numbers. And okay. Not for, not for the uh, turbulent case. Um, all right, I'm just looking on the chat. Um, so I'll, I'll ask another question then if there's, <laughs> right, there's no more on the chat. Um, so you mentioned in the future work you're going to multiphase flow. Um, are you able to use the same, um, the solver from Imperial College with, um, with that or are you having to develop extra um, computational um, methods for that? Uh, no, we are, we are connecting uh... DNS, yeah. Uh, also on the uh, Nectar Plus hmm? Plus. Uh, yeah, this software. Yeah, we, we can use it to solve uh, multi phase problems, but uh, uh, more uh, re resources are uh, uh, will be used for the multi phase flow. Okay, great, thanks. Um, so I, I can't see any more questions um, in the chat or the Q&A. Um, so I guess with that, I'll, I'll wrap up the webinar. Um, so thanks again, Guang, um, for a really interesting presentation. Um, thank you everyone for attending and, and bearing with us with the technical difficulties we had. 
Um, if people want to ask more questions, they can contact Grang after this talk through the Hoover text app or email, I'm sure. Um, and with that, I will thank you again and say goodbye to everyone. Okay. Uh, thank you, Dr. Jackson, and uh, thank you all. Thank you.